blue, more colors, standard, there's the blue, boom, and then font group and center it. We could also make these thinner. So if I select the whole thing again, make them a little bit thinner because I only have one number in there. And then I could wrap the text so the headers still fit just to practice that. So I'll select the entire header field and go to the home tab, alignment and wrap the text. So now you've got the header. Now wrapping the text, uh, notice that, that that makes this whole row uh, wider. So if I had anything to the right, it could be it could kind of be kind of an issue because it makes everything on this whole row wide. But there's pro that's the pros and cons to wrapping the text. So then if I say the total heads on each flip, we'll we'll do our count if. So if it's a number one, it represents heads. Number two represents tails. So let's see what our results are. How many heads did we get out of? I only did 74 flips instead of 75. Okay, out of 74 flips. So equals count if brackets. I'm going to put my cursor on this cell. I'm going to do it with my keystrokes this time, holding control shift up. But then I want to make sure I don't pick up the header. So I'm going to say hold shift down and that picks up the whole range. I can still see the formula up here. And so I'm just going to hit enter. And oh, I'm sorry, I didn't finish the formula. I have to say comma. And the next criteria is uh, if it's a one, number one, and then I can close it. To see it down here, it's count if the whole range, comma, criteria one. And then tails is going to be the same equals count if brackets shift nine. I'm going to do it just with the keyboard now. Up, up, holding shift and control, up holding just shift down so I don't include the header, looking at the formula bar, adding the comma to put the condition, the second criteria, number two, and enter. If I double click on it down here, you could see the whole function. And then if I put my total, it should come out to 74 using the trusty sum function equals the SUM of these two. So I'll put an underline here home tab font group underline and then I can say the percent heads percent heads is going to be equal to the total heads 34 heads divided by the number of flips 75 and then that shows up as just a number because I don't have it as a percent formatting home tab number group percentifying it I like to call it the percentify some people that annoys some people but I think it's fun. And then I'm going to un, I'll just keep it at that percent. So we'll round it. And then percent tails. And we're going to say this equals 41 over 75. So that should be percentified 55. So the percent total should be 100%, right? So we're going to say percent total is going to be equal to the SUM of the 45 and the 55 which is one and if i go to the home tab number group percentify it comes out to 100 which i can't see so i'll widen the cell out a bit and so there it is so then i'm going to put an underline here home tab uh font group underline and there we have it now i can copy this all the way across and i can see for this first test uh, 34 heads, 41 tails, that's a breakout of 45-55. We would expect uh, it to be 50-50, but of course we only flipped it 74 times out of the total population, which is infinite times, <laughs> so so it's not going to be exact, right? Let's, let's say we did that though 100 times, so I'm going to copy this all the way across, selecting them, copy with the fill handle all the way across, now notice that I can't see, whenever you see these hashtaggy things, that means usually the cell is not large enough. So I'm gonna select all of the headers all the way across to try to get them to be the same size. Selecting all of them to here, and I need them to be about this wide. So I'm gonna put my cursor between ES and ET and make them wide enough to see that 100%.
So there we have it. So if I look at all, so if we look at all of these, we could say if let's just look at the heads side, which we would expect to be 50%, right? So we got 45, 53, 56, 56, 53, uh, 60, 49, right? So some are higher, some are lower, but they're kind of hovering around the 50. So let's select this whole thing. I'm going to put this in my my uh, calculation formatting, which I'll make another color to make it stand out as not part of the center of the table. Home tab, uh, font group, and I usually make that dark blue, or I have been at least lately, <laughs> and then white on the text so we can see the text, font, and put some brackets around. Now, it, now I might want to then say, okay, let's see if I can take these results. Let's just take a look at the heads and see if I can analyze that a little bit more. And maybe I'd like to do that with a vertical analysis. So I'd like to take this, this is in a horizontal row and transpose it to see it vertically. So what I can do there is I can copy this whole thing and it's kind of a two-step process. I'm gonna copy this whole thing and say, I would like to make that into a column, control C or copy. I'm gonna go up here, up top, and I'm gonna first paste it just the numbers only. I don't want the formulas, just the numbers. So I'm gonna right click, paste it one, two, three. And then I'm gonna copy that whole thing again, control C, and paste it here, but transpose. Right click and paste special and transpose, meaning I want you to reverse the X and the Y's. So now it's in a column format. Then I'm gonna delete all of this stuff from IR all the way out. I del I'm deleting the whole column, so you can just delete the numbers. You don't really need to, but right click and delete. And so there we have our data. So I could enter a table here if I want uh, into this data. Uh, so I could say, let's go to the insert tab and make a table and say, okay. So there's our table. And then I could say this is the expected value. Notice when I put something on the second line of the table and hit enter, before I do that, let's, I'm gonna undo that. I'm gonna select this whole data, make it a percent, uh, home tab, numbers, percentifying it. And then, and you could add some more decimals, maybe you want it more exact over here, you know, but let's keep it at, let's keep the decimals off. And then I'm gonna put the expected value here, expected. So, and notice when I hit enter, it adds another table. Now the expected amount is just 0.5 or 50%. It's already in a percent format. And then I can say, this is the difference. I'm gonna make another column, difference. And when I hit enter, it makes the whole column. This is gonna be equal the 45 minus the 50 there's the difference. I'm going to copy this down too, just double clicking on uh, that uh, fill handle. And so now you can see the differences, uh, some above and some below on the table. So that looks good. I'm going to, I have an extra column. So I'm going to delete this column over here, right click and delete. Let's do that. Now, if I want to add a total line to a table, I could do that by going to the table tab. So I'm on the table, in the table tab, I could add a total column, which is in the table style options group. And then down here, uh, it 